Hey folks, this is Grandison Shines here with Saduri International and thank you for watching this video and or listening to the audio, however you're taking in this information. This is one of our primary conversations, I should say, and or presentations that we'll be going through in the program. We often start off, I should say, we always start off with communication, understanding that in our program, the whole duration of 48 weeks, the year long program, phase one is all about communication. And as we always state in the program, you'll hear me say it now and you hear me say it more than once in the program during the sessions. Just because you are a leader, that does not mean that you know how to, commu to communicate. I'll say it again. Just because you're a leader, that does not mean that you know how to communicate. And in fact, most organizations' problems can re be resolved with proper communication. Oftentimes when we start talking to an organization about the program that we're going to lay out for them and they we have them explain to us some of their more pressing issues their pain points and they list a myriad of different things that they consider to be leadership issues well we put them in a few different buckets we put them in the communication bucket put them in the leadership bucket put them in the accountability bucket put them also in the process bucket as well process management process optimization business process optimization business process management and oftentimes when they are including that information or giving us that information, a lot of the content that they deliver to us, that they have written out, that they say to us is all embedded. I said majority of it is embedded in communication mishaps. Understanding how to communicate is one of the best skill sets that you're ever going to develop as a leader. Everything you're doing is all about how you communicate with someone from the inception of your your project and understanding who is going to do what, the roles, the goals, the KPIs, the OKRs of the project, all the way to managing people, moving people around. So you have the soft skills and you have the performance-based skills of leadership. And guess what? In both of those opportunities, you are going to be communicating with people. And so because of that, we have the communication concepts, very high-level concepts that we're going to go through and they're all embedded throughout the entire program. I'll say it again, they're all embedded throughout the entire program. So the information you're gonna hear about and see today is going to resurface during a number of sessions as we're going through the different co coaching sessions, whether you're in a group or whether you are taking one-on-one -on -one coaching with a, a desired coach or a selected coach here within Sidori International. So this video is going to cover a lot of that information because this is so broad stroke and it also gets in depth in conversation both with groups and individuals. So what I am doing here is making this video so you can take the time <clears throat> to listen to what I have to say here, listen to what we purport in the sessions in the communication phase one. And then also you can you have the ability to rewind, replay the content because you're going to need to hear it over and over and over. And that's part of one of our modalities, which we'll be talking about shortly here in this video. It's part of the one of the modalities of how you master any skill sets by repetition. So communication, when you master communication, you can really have an organization increase its PEP, what we call PEP, productivity, efficiency, and ultimately the profitability of the organization as well. So all of that is affected by you as a leader. All of that can be manipulated in the right way by utilizing proper communication techniques is that what we're going to talk about today so as we're getting started here's what i want you to do i want you to look at this one here and i, I want you to explain what communication is write down three opportunities and what communication isn't write down three opportunities there as well so take a moment pause the video again or the audio wherever you're listening to this communication is and fill in three items that you have underneath there and then communication is it fill in three items there as well pause the video and we'll be back in a second okay now that we're back take a look at what you have written down and then i want you to talk to your coach about what you have written down regarding what communication is and what communication isn't you'll also get a workbook that i'll give you at the end of this particular session there's a link that's going to go out to you so you can download the workbook and answer several questions regarding communication this is just one of them but let me give you the definition of, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> let me give you the definition of communication so we can all be on the same page communication is the act or process of utilizing words sounds behaviors 
body movements or body positions to express or exchange information or to express your ideas, thoughts, feelings to someone else. Okay. And every communication involves at least one sender, a message or a number of messages and a recipient, at least one. Okay. At least one in each of those areas. I'll read it again. <clears throat> the actor process is utilizing words, sounds, behaviors, or body movements or body positions to express or exchange information or to express your ideas, thoughts, feelings to someone else. Every communication invo involves at least one sender, one message, and one recipient. Okay, that's a true definition of leadership. Now, as you're going through that with your coach, you're going to have to explain your reasons and they may talk to you a little bit more about what you have written down there about what communication is to you and what communication isn't to you. Totally subjective to you. All right. <clears throat> Next, we're going to talk about the modalities. Here is the foundation of our entire program. Everything is laid on top of this. And I encourage you to understand and learn these modalities, even internalize them to the part, part to the portion that you have them memorized absolutely memorized so we're going to go through there are eight different modalities we're going to go through these modalities right quick and then we're going to accentuate some of the other parts of the program you are going to have a session on the modalities just the modalities in and of itself there's also a workbook for that one that'll come later on in the program but having the modalities internalized so you can understand how to properly construct communication your communication to people that you are talking with later on how to properly receive the communication messages and understand what's involved in communication. And you'll be able to really start to tailor, customize, design communication that can work for not only you, but also for the person and or the group of people that you are talking to. That's exactly what the communication, when you utilize communication with intention, or you do, when you utilize communication with strategy, you can definitely do that. You can do that in a very concise and powerful manner. So let's talk about the modalities right quick. There are eight of them. One is called, the first one, I'm going to start, if you're looking at the video, I'm going to start with my top left. This one we always start because it's extremely, extremely important for leaders, not just for leaders, but for everyone else in the organization, people in general, to understand. We call it the five parts of the self. And there's five pillars. And by the way, let me take a step back right quick. If you're looking at the graphic, and you will see the graphic, there's at least, at least three of the pillars utilized in every single conversation okay and some of these have different pillars and the nomenclature and how we construct the pillar the name of the of the modality is it has a number first and that's how many pillars there are in that particular modality so five parts of the self meaning there are five different pillars and there are at least three of these are in, that are included in one conversation in every single conversation you have whether it's two minutes five minutes two hours it doesn't matter they're there trust me and you'll start to see how this unfolds like a nice little flower in the program as you're going through the program start internalizing this and start understanding how to intentionally pur purposefully and st strategically utilize communication concepts <clears throat> back to the modalities five parts of the self self-confidence self-esteem self-worth self-image and self-control we'll be going through those again later on in the program that's the five parts of the self. The second modality is the five parts of the authentic self, which includes the mind, the will, the imagination, the emotions, and the intellect. All of those are truly important. And in fact, I'm going to tell you, and most of the coaches, or all the coaches in our, that you're going to have from Sudan International are going to tell you, you have to develop self-control over the mind, self-control over the will, self-control over the imagination, self-control over the emotions, self-control over the intellect. It's really important for leaders to understand how to do that and be masters of your mind, your will, imagination, emotions, and intellect. One of the hardest things to do is to control the mind, especially the thoughts that come into the mind and master the thoughts and or be able to hold the proper thought for that moment or those moments for that duration of time. It's really, really tough. It takes a lot of mental energy, a lot of willpower in order to do that. I mean, you're going to learn how to do that in the program. Talking about the mind, we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on, how we're going to reprogram your subconscious. And in fact, through this video, audio, however you're taking this information, I'm going to give you an assignment on understanding how to utilize this that's going to carry throughout the entire program. Okay, I'm going to give you an assignment when we get there. I'll let, definitely let you know. 
The third modality is <coughs> the five senses of the body. The five senses of the body includes, of course, sight, smell, hear, taste, touch. Understanding the question that I often ask, and this is where it stumps some people, is that how, understanding how taste is involved in communication. When, as we're going through the program, I'll tell you a story about that, how taste. But start thinking about it right now. How is taste? Not just taste from a metaphorical standpoint, but taste from a literal standpoint. How is taste involved? How can it influence and or change and or alter your communication, your leadership, your accountability? Which we, in the program, we teach that communication, of course, is communication. We teach that leadership is communication. We teach that accountability is communication. Because all three of those, you have to talk. And when you're operating in processes, guess what? You're also communicating, either verbally and or written communication. So it's always there. Communication's there. Then we have the nine types of nonverbal communication. Nine types of nonverbal communication include facial expressions. By the way, in all these modalities, you know the words that are there. This may look complicated when you see it. It's not complicated. It just looks that way. You'll you'll definitely understand how it's 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 purported in the organization, how it's purported in the, the sessions. So there were nine types of verbal, non-verbal communication, facial expressions, gestures, paralinguistics, proxemics, eye contact, haptics, appearance, artifacts and symbols, and then finally body language. Those are the nine types of non-verbal communication. <clears throat> Next, we have the five essential factors of balance. Balance is key. Also, extremely important for leaders to understand the intricacies of balance. The one thing about balance, you have to have all five of these in order to have balance. All five of them have to be in operation at once. It doesn't matter if it's a thing like your pen or a your cell phone or whatever it is, your car, your chair, your desk. All of that has to have these five components in order to have balance. Otherwise, you have imbalance. Now, the thing about balance is it can also be utilized independently, each of the pillars, the five pillars. Five essential factors of balance can be utilized independently. And you'll be talking about that as you're going through the program for communication, for leadership, for <coughs> accountability and business process management. First pillar, center of gravity. That's the first one. Second one, rigidity. I'm saying that, that you have to be rigid. You have to be flexible and rigid. Again, that's balance. Height, you have to have height, you have to have weight, and you also have the foundation or the base of a certain thing, of the thing that has the, that is going to be balanced. Base being important. You got to have the base, otherwise there's nothing to stand on. Therefore, you don't have balance. So again, those five pillars are center of gravity, rigidity, height, weight, and base or foundation. Next modality, one of my favorite ones again, five levels of thinking. Self-centered. That's the first level of thinking. That's the level of thinking. In fact, throughout the program, this is the only thing that we do not have to teach you how to be is self-centered in that instance. <clears throat> in fact, I say that there are times when we have to reignite self-centeredness in people because they get so altruistic, which is the second pillar, that they don't care about and think about themselves in that way, okay, or a particular way in order to add balance. The proper balance is to be self-centered. You need that so you can continue to improve yourself, continue to be making sure that you are increasing in your intellect, your wisdom, knowledge, understanding, experience, so you can then share that and help other people from an altruistic standpoint. The third pillar is expressive thinking, thinking in terms of empathetic thinking and sympathetic thinking, having empathy for someone or emotional intelligence. That is a way of thinking. This is where thinking stops for most people that you're going to be interacting with. The other two are very important, but they're a bit more advanced and a bit more nuanced in their sense. Fourth one is energetic thinking. Do understand that energy is everywhere. You can control that energy by how you're talking to someone. You can diffuse someone's anger. Wherever there's emotion, it's always energy. You can diffuse someone's anger by how you communicate, how you structure your communication, and utilize certain techniques that you were talking about later on, problem solving, conflict resolution, those sorts of opportunities to really redirect and direct energy to where it needs to go so it can benefit you and the other person. And then finally, expansive thinking, thinking of everything in totality. 
thinking of everything, think of the end from the beginning and being able to utilize certain opportunities, certain techniques, concepts in the midst thereof until you get the end to the desired the result that you imagined that you wanted or the goal that you wanted. So expansive thinking. Those five levels are, again, self-centered thinking, altruistic thinking, expressive thinking, energetic thinking, and then finally, expansive thinking. <coughs> the seventh modality is called the six principles of mastery. Those, these six things, and you can master any skill set in life. Again, do these six things. You can master anything in life. The first three are our learning styles. Everyone has these learning styles. And as a leader, you have to find out which one for which person in your department, your group, your team is more accentuated for the thing that you're showing or telling them to do. Because audio, visual, kinesthetic, those are the first three. Those are our learning styles. But it's extremely important to understand as a leader, who are your more visual learners? Who are the more audible learners? Who are the more ones that have to get their hands dirty from a kinesthetic standpoint, getting out there and doing it as you're, as they're seeing it and as they're hearing it? One of those are going to be more primary depending on the thing that you're talking to them about. The fourth pillar is meditation. Now utilize that word not to sit there and you're with your legs crossed and energy locked in the finger so it doesn't escape. And mm, nope, not like that. I'm talking about meditation, practical thinking. There'll be some things you need to separate yourself isolate and then ruminate and pontificate on those particular things apply an extreme amount of thought energy to that particular thing and then from there you'll have to do those things in a repetitive manner all four of those you may even have to focus on a certain thing and think about a certain thing ruminate a certain thing over and over and over to really get the ideas and or the concept the wisdom knowledge insight embedded in the thing and the skill set whatever you're doing and finally as a leader <clears throat> what we are supposed to do is actually take that skill set, whatever we learn, and teach it to someone else. So those are the six principles to master anything in life. By teaching, you understand how to break it down. You understand how to deal with other people's tolerance. You, you exercise your patience level. At the same time, you have the benefit of, the, of sharing and passing on that particular skill set, which is one thing that we're supposed to do as leaders. Six pillars are, again, audio, visual, kinesthetic, meditation, repetition and to finally teach then we have fi the final modality it's called the six strategies of execution it's all about execution now that you are understanding how to communicate you're doing certain projects at, at work you're doing a certain thing it's all about execution how you execute is everything and there are six strategies here first one speed second one accuracy third one timing fourth one power and or authority fifth one savviness and then the sixth pillar finesse <clears throat> do know that you should never ever ever sacrifice speed for accuracy and vice versa when you're working a process or you're learning a thing you're going to get better at it you'll be able to speed up the factor in which you do it but at the same time you don't want to sacrifice the the accuracy you still want to maintain a high yield and or output for whatever it is that you're doing so you never sacrifice speed for accuracy so remember that those two go hand in glove should never be separated they go together they should always be working together timing is extremely important i'll tell you a story about that later on but timing is extremely important some things that you might want to say and or do might not be expedient at that time and if it's not guess what? You have to resist the temptation and the impulse and the desire to share that particular thing, thing or do that particular thing for that moment. It's temporary, but you can address it later on. Power and authority, those two are synonymous as well. Having the power to do things with a certain power, a certain fervor, but also having the authority to do that particular thing. And then the savviness, doing that particular thing in a wise, sagacious manner. And then finally, making it look effortless. You sharing or doing a particular skill set, you get so prowess at it, so adept with that particular, particular skill set that it looks effortless and it looks like you are just cruising and doing that particular thing. So these are the eight modalities. You will dive into this. You'll do a whole session just talking about the modalities in and of themselves. So learn this here. These are the foundational 
points of the entire program. Everything else is laid on top of this and it's embedded in everything that you're going to be hearing and learning about. Finally, we get to, I won't say finally, but next we get to the conversation. There's two types of conversations that we need to master as leaders. And we call it wide and shallow and narrow and deep. Now let me dive into this and explain. Wide and shallow communication. Leaders know how to or should know how to strategically use both of these communication or conversation concepts to build rapport and to demonstrate their leadership abilities. Folks that word demonstrate, we'll be talking about that later on when we start talking about the influence skill. You're going to hear that later on yourself in another whole presentation as the end session regarding influence. <clears throat> but again, you have this whole wide and shallow conversation. Now, what is the wide and shallow conversation? Being able to hold the conversation regarding a variety of subject matter, small talk, basically. If you look at small talk, that's a one good opportunity to start building rapport. And leaders, yes, you should be utilizing small talk when you come into the office or when you're about to leave or throughout the day. Don't just come to someone, always check in with them or do whatever it may be. You don't have to have small talk every single time, but it's appropriate to start building a rapport. You're going to need that small talk. It's good for social settings and in order to not appear socially awkward. So you can talk about current events. You can talk about weather, talk about sports. Stay away from politics, religion, sex, those sorts of things. Stay away from those charged up topics, those, those topics that can really charge people up. And then you can start, you'll start separating and isolating yourself based on different views on those points. So just stay away from those. That's not a good subject matter in which to engage. But being able to talk about a myriad of subjects is going to be extremely important for you as a leader. It shows that you are where you can develop the rapport. It's going to feed into your, your brand later on. We'll talk about that as well. Finally, we have narrow and deep. This is when you're able to hold a conversation based on your specific domain knowledge. Information knowledge that you want to come and talk to the person about, you can get wide and deep or next to say narrow and deep about that particular matter, the subject matter. See how the height of a thing can be in the crew alluded with this from the balance modality. <clears throat> so you should be able to talk about the intricacies of a subject matter in a very deep level. Therefore, you're demonstrating your expertise at the same time. When you have the ex extensive knowledge, wisdom, and insight on a particular thing, you're demonstrating your expertise. You should be demonstrating your expertise as a leader all the time. And we'll be talking about how to do that within the program, demonstrating your expertise. People like dealing with people who are more knowledgeable th than them, especially within the organizational aspect and also from other uh, opportunities as well. But understanding, keeping this into your organization, if you're the go-to person, if someone continues or people continue to go to you for a certain thing, you've painted yourself by default or intention that you are you have intimate and deep knowledge about that particular subject matter or that domain knowledge, whatever it may be. Totally need both. They need to be utilized strategically with intention, just not by default. Everything you do as a leader should be intentional. It should be strategic. It should be done purposefully, it should be done and driven in the right manner. All right, so we're going to be talking about that later on in the program. So if you see this wheel here, it says influence skill. There's eight other, I should say, there's eight total opportunities that we're going to talk about. Building rapport, active listening, asking the right questions, being wearing a body language, selling the benefits, demonstrating expertise, definitive speech, and then finally investing time. You need that as a leader. This is one of the strongest skill sets that you will ever utilize and you will continue to utilize in order to build your career as a formidable leader and to demonstrate that you have the leader you're adept as a leader you have the prowess in the leadership skill set very very important in order for you to understand how to do that again we're talking high level concepts here we are going to do a deep dive into it later on I want you to think about this phrase here, or this is the opportunity here, default versus intention, okay? Default versus intention. A lot of things that up to this point that we are going to be talking about, you may have done by default. I'm going to challenge you to think about it from an intentional standpoint, starting with how to utilize communication and your confidence integrated with it in a very, very, very intentional way, extremely intentional way. Again, you are to benefit others, not just yourself. You're here to benefit others and get the organization to a point of being profitable, getting to the point of the organization to it's helping other people. So default is something that is just, you do it haphazardly. We all have programming, which becomes our default programming. 
And we'll be talking about that a little bit later on. How are you going to reprogram in a certain area? I'm going to challenge you. It's a really, really big challenge for you. So hold tight. It's coming up. But default versus intention. You want to start doing things by way of intention. So default is more related to the subconscious mind, especially if we talk about the five parts of the self, the mind, that first pillar. Subconscious mind, the part of the mind that is not currently in focal awareness. Okay, existing in the part of the mind that you don't really think of or you don't know, be doing or think of or are automatically thinking of or always thinking of at the forefront of your mind. That certain things that you do or that you have done, and you may have an affinity with, a, with what I'm about to say. You've done something, say even routine, and you thought, did I do that? Did I brush my teeth? I don't remember. Did I put, where did I put my keys? And then you go to a place where you usually put the keys and they're there. Well, you did that by default, subconscious. You just do it. Routine. You have to brush my teeth. Did I brush my teeth? Yeah, yeah, I think I did. And then you touch the toothbrush, see that's a little wet there. Oh, yeah, I brushed my teeth already. Okay, cool. All right. Well, that's default mind. It's not in focal awareness, part of routine, part of the thing you just do. We have, much like a computer, your brain is also has these programs that are running in the background that enable you to do certain things automatically on autopilot. That's the default aspect of it. When we go to the intentional side of it, Talk about intention is more related to the conscious mind. This is where things that you're at the forefront of your mind, you're doing those things at a conscious level. You're cognizant of what you're doing. So that consists of what we are aware of at any given point in time. You know that you're sitting at the, you know that you're listening to this right now. You know that you're driving or something like that. You're, you're, you're sitting in the office looking at the video, whatever it is. You have focal awareness of that. It includes the thing that we are thinking about right now, whether it's in front of our mind or in the back. Okay, so understanding how we can also utilize this intention in a strategic manner. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road. We have to reprogram our subconscious mind because you can do that. And I'm going to challenge you. This whole program is designed to reprogram you to think about a different way. Think about communication in a different way. Think about leadership in a different way. Think about accountability in a different way. We have to reprogram our subconscious mind by using our conscious mind intentionally in order to, to reprogram, in order to do so. That is not an easy task. It's a daunting task. It's a task that takes a supreme amount of thought energy, the energetic thinking, and the willpower to maintain and hold that particular thing to understand how to do this or how to do whatever it is on purpose, strategically, intentionally. And again, I'm going to be challenging you here with a very, very tough challenge that most of us have. And we start utilizing this. It's simple in concept. It's difficult in application. Okay, what we're going to be talking about later on. Simple in concept and understanding, but difficult in applying what I'm going to be telling you to do. And this is where you have, this is where the rubber meets the road. Understanding how to reprogram subconscious mind by utilizing the conscious mind intentionally. Understanding how to do that emphatically. And in this program, we teach that communication is intentional. We teach that leadership is intentional. We teach that accountability is intentional. We teach that DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, how you treat people and how you see people and how to exit those biases. All, that, all of that is intentional. And then finally, confidence. As a leader, confidence is extremely important. Confidence is also intentional. And it's like a muscle. It can grow and it can be balanced, not getting into the point of arrogance. Very, very prowess leaders understand how to maintain a high level of self-confidence. We'll be talking about the three realms of confidence here shortly. But this is extremely important to understand that leadership, again, intentional. Communication, very, very intentional. Accountability, all five of these that you see here, if you look at listening to it, the ones I just named, it's all done by intention. It's all done by purpose. It can all and it should be done strategically in order to get people to where they need to go for their careers, for their ideas, whatever that may be. OK, confidence versus competence, confidence versus competence. There are two types of words and phrases that will jeopardize both of those. OK, two types of phrases and words that will jeopardize how someone else will judge your level of confidence and competence. And it is our job, it is our job to understand that 
you utilizing what I'm about to show you, and here's where the challenge is going to come. Well, put your even your brand or can put your brand in jeopardy. And again, we'll talk about brand later on. Totally different session. Brand meaning that you're going to have your brand developed by purpose. Most of us have created the brand, or you have a brand that is created by default. Again, default versus intention here. All right, let's talk about the first one. And here, I'll give you the challenge: filler words. Words like, um, ah, uh, like, right, you know, so basically, um, and, uh, and stuff like that, I guess. Those are filler words. And then you have the other part of it, low power phrases. Phrases that don't show commitment and or certainty when you are talking. I might be able to do that. I'll try. I think so. I don't know. I don't understand. I should be able to, perhaps, maybe, I guess. Those, these words and phrases will severely jeopardize your confidence and competence in the eyes of the person who you are communicating with. And over, and most of us have an overabundance of use of these words and we don't even realize it. So here's a challenge. I promise you a challenge. Here's your challenge. Your challenge from this point forward and even in the program and your coach will also be monitoring this. It's to not utilize filler words and not utilize low power phrases. The coach that you're assigned to will catch those filler words and you may hear something like every time you say a filler word, it's going to be it's going to be really opportunistic for you to understand to not interject these words in your conversation. Right now, most of us have the program running in our brains that will automatically interject these filler words automatically interject these low power phrases and i tell you it's doing you a disservice in terms of your level of confidence and competence as i've been talking remind it back to the beginning when you listen to this again see if i have been utilizing filler words i used to utilize filler words low power phrases a lot until i got coached and understanding how to not do that start doing more presentations and i heard another gentleman use a presentation one time or do deliver a presentation. He was really using a lot of filler words. They were so distracting. And I didn't believe much of what he said. Same thing happened to another lady. She they gave a presentation. And, and we hear it. And I can tell you story after story after story. How when listening to this. Or these filler words. It just jeopardized my level of confidence in what they're saying. And also they didn't seem as competent. You seem like that in other people's lives. Here's the thing about it. They will never tell you. Pause right there. They'll never tell you. They are listening to you talk. They're listening to you utilize these filler words. It may be extremely distracting to them and they'll never tell you. It'll just go on because such a normalized thing in our society, in many societies, many cultures, to utilize filler words. But you can, you don't have to utilize filler words. So here's how to stop utilizing filler words. Be cognizantly aware of how you're talking. Pause when you it's about to come out. And in fact, I guarantee you, you'll do this because it happens every single time in our program. Once you start understanding and noticing this, and then you're going to be called on to engage with your coach, whether you're in a group and or one-on-one -on -one coaching, and you're going to start off with the filler words. And they may ding you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know I will. Start over, start over. You said a filler word at the beginning. Oh, I did? Yes, you did. So when you're engaging, you start to talk. Resist the temptation to catch that filler word. Understand that you have to have the active listening on point in order to hear the filler words. Therefore, when you're talking, pay attention to what you're saying. That's where the strategy comes in and the intention comes in. The filler words. Now, the pause is going to be something that's going to really help you out. Understanding how to strategically pause. And that pause may start off longer pause when you first start utilizing and paying attention to filler words and low power phrases. What's going to happen is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter till you're just flowing as you're talking. And those pauses won't be so apparent. But do take the opportunity to pause. Later on, you'll start understanding and I'll, and I'll point it out to all my coaches, understanding that most time we pause, we have our eyes move to the left or to the right. Okay, you want to pause and then also maintain the eye contact. We'll be talking about that later on. That's another automatic thing that happens, especially when you're talking about something more complex 
when you're talking in bullet points, your list of the different things that you're pulling out of your head, the eyes tend to switch over and move around. Well, I'm going to teach you how to catch that and notice those certain things. This is where communication comes into play because people, again, they see it and they may not ever say anything. And we wonder sometimes why they didn't really pay attention or they, they weren't seen as engaged or whatever it may be. It's because of the low power words and low power phrases and filler words. Guaranteed. All right. So that's your challenge. Challenge is to not utilize filler words, low power phrases anymore, especially during the conversation. Now you're going to take it outside of the coaching sessions and utilize it in your real workplace environment as well. I'm standing here for a minute because I really want you to understand this and how it jeopardizes information or confidence, confidence in someone else's eyes towards you. So the opportunity is to start catching it when you're in your next meeting, right? When you're done with this, start thinking about it. And then what you're going to start doing is picking it up from other people as well. Wow, he does use a lot of, a lot of filler words. Filler words, low power phrases that you never really paid attention to before. You're going to start hearing them. And then you go to the, you'll get to the point where it becomes irritating. And then there's a the point where you can block that out, the irritation out. And you talk the way you should talk as a leader, not utilizing low power phrases and filler words okay so that's your assignment next we're going to talk about confidence because again this is related to confidence uh, excuse me competence and the default versus intention information we have three rounds of confidence most of the time when people talk about confidence they talk about it from a single point or a single area mainly self-confidence so they'll say confidence or self-confidence. They utilize that interchangeably, same thing, or most of the time people talk about it the same way. But there are also what we call others' confidence, you assessing other people's confidence, meaning that if you are going to, if you're a leader, you're disseminating, you have a new project coming up, you want to assign somebody a project, disseminating those particular mandates of the project nuances, you have to assess that person's confidence or you have assessed that person's confidence in order for them to fulfill the job. Not only do they have the, technical skill set but you also have the mental skill set to go along with it so you assess their confidence well this would be good for so and so because he has his he does this he does this knowledge technical but he also i believe he can do this you assess other people's confidence then you have to instill confidence in other people giving someone a new project never done it before hey you know what? i'm signing you this because you, i believe you can do it because of these reasons why instilling confidence well i've never done that before well i have confidence you can do it it's not motivating it's instilling confidence or maybe partial, partially motivating, a portion of that is motivational, but at the same time, the confidence, you're instilling confidence. You can do it. I believe in you. You can do it. And then that gets them jazzed up. They, their confidence increases. Now they can go out and perform the duties that you have assigned to them. So we'll be talking about and we'll be deep diving into these three realms of confidence as well. One of the other techniques that's important to understand how to utilize, and you'll be talking about this later on as well, is inclusive speech technique and individual speech technique. Both of those have their important aspects and places. So conversation, when you utilize single, let's talk about the individual speech technique first of all. First of all, we talk about utilizing I, me, you. Okay, You utilize the individual speech technique to isolate Okay, when communicating accountability especially accountability in a positive manner okay it's really really important utilizing the i me you when you're communicating accountability in a positive manner giving kudos showing appreciation delegating tasks you strategically when being authoritarian in your leadership style okay you don't want to put them off you have their guards up your job as leaders to make it as non-confrontational as possible when you're talking to somebody they shouldn't come up they shouldn't come to you in defense mode when you're talking to them you want them in the relaxation mode so that they can intake what you're what you're saying and perform the duties okay again utilizing this in a positive aspect manner of accountability giving kudos giving acknowledgement showing appreciation delegating tasks when you're showing appreciation and giving kudos in public, those sorts of things. Recognition, utilize I, you, me, those sorts of things. You did a great job while they're doing the job. Continue the good work. I like what you're doing. Continue to do that. Those types of opportunities, those, that's the appropriate use of the individual speech technique. Then we go into, we call the inclusive speech technique. 
And we want to utilize, and that consists of we, us, our, let's, together, right? Those types of words. Use the inclusive speech technique to align yourself with the person and or a group in addressing an issue. We have a problem. When you're talking to your team, we have an issue. Not you have an issue. You created this issue. No, we have an issue. You're the leader. You're included with it. It's your problem too. Well, we have an issue. We have a problem. So utilize this with the, with the align yourself with the person, the group in addressing issues or problems or situations. Use this also to promote a camaraderie or promote camaraderie amongst your team members. We need to be more active. We need to be more proactive. We can do this. We are going, we got this project, whatever it may be. Utilize that. Okay. This will increase your influence and communicate that you're supportive and you'll come up with solutions together with the person. All right. Even when you're holding someone accountability from a negative standpoint, hey, you know what? We have an issue. Let's talk about it. Even when they did it, because accountability always, always rolls up one level. We'll be talking about that in the program as well. Accountability always rolls up one level. But understand that this will increase your influence. You need influence with your coworkers, with your subordinates, your superiors, and your colleagues and peers. So you need to utilize your skill set of influence. You utilize we, let's, our, us together vertically in the organization and horizontally within your organization. All concepts or understanding when to use it. You have a problem. It's us. We let's our together. We can solve this problem. That kind of opportunity. We'll be diving more into that. And then we have the tones and approaches. And we'll talk about tones and approaches. Again, we talk about concepts. So I'm talking high level concepts. So you can take different sections of this and utilize and, and actually listen to this again, because it's going to be very important for you to understand the tones and approaches of verbal and nonverbal communication. Let's talk about the tones first. First of all, <clears throat> we have four tones we've identified. We have passive, passive aggressive, aggressive, and assertive. We teach in our program you want to be assertive. Let's talk about all four of these right quick. Passive, pushover, submissive, indecisive, apologetic, that type of passive comment or comment and or communication. You have passive aggressive, which can connote manipulation, non-cooperation, sarcasm, guilt inducing. You don't want that. It's there. It's there in your organization. It is there. You have to recognize it and understand how to normalize it with assertive communication. Then we have aggressive communication. That communication can be combative, overbearing, bossy, arrogant. You don't want that either. As a leader, you want assertive communication. You want to be self-assured, you want to be confident, you want to be direct, you want to be responsible, accountable. That's when you start having assertive, you want to be committed in your, your speech. That's very, very appropriate for a leader. We always, the gold one here, or if you're listening, if you watch this video later on, you see the, the gold one, it also has the word assertive in it. Assertive communication is the best type of communication you're going to be utilizing. So talk about the four approaches to communication, all right? Talk about the four approaches. You have the avoider, the avoider aggressor, the aggressor, and the asserter. Right, quick understanding which each one is. The avoider. Avoiders admit they hate confrontation. Those people, you know those people. And as a leader, you should know who those people are on your team. They do not like confrontation. Rather than addressing issues, immediately they find credible reasons to procrastinate. That's the avoider. The assessor, let's just say the avoid aggressor, excuse me, the avoid aggressor, will confront aggressively over modes of communication and be avoided and procrastinate when having to meet someone face to face. Keyboard bullies, as we call them, whether they're texting and or signing, singing, sending an email. And then when you're in front of them, they have nothing to say to you. That's not even, that's passive aggressive. You don't want that either. The aggressor, the aggressor provides himself or herself on, they pride themselves on confrontation. Okay? Prides themselves on being able to be very combative and confront, and confronting someone. While it may be true that aggressors don't fear intimidating conversations, these managers or these leaders fail to get results that change performance or behavior. They're too aggressive to even notice the thing. They're too busy being authoritarian, trying to get things done. And as you know, these people tend to have the highest rate of turnover in your organization. Then you have the asserter. The assertors are competent and confident in initiating difficult conversations. I put difficult conversations in there because all the other conversations are automatically there. But difficult conversations, they assert themselves in, in those particular situations and or conversations and get positive results. 
behaviors change, people's behaviors change, productivity increases, tardiness increases, the churn rate goes down. There's a lot that happens from being an asserter in terms of your attitude and how you approach communication. We'll be di deep diving into it later on. Then we have this other technique called the complete communication technique. The complete communication technique is very, very nuanced in and of itself. In fact, this is one of the programs that we introduced. It becomes one of the highest esteemed and highly utilized techniques in the organization. We do a separate session just on this one, but this communication technique, which allows you to fully express your side of the communication, or excuse me, of the conversation without causing someone else to utilize their imagination in order to assume, presume, and fill in unknown information. I'll say that again. This communication technique, complete communication technique, allows you to fully express your side of the conversation without causing someone else to utilize their imagination in order to assume, presume, or fill in unknown information. And that encompasses answering six questions when you talk or and or give instruction and or receiving instruction, getting these questions answered in your mind or on your notes, whatever it may be. Answering who, what, why, where, when, how. During the session, you'll find out which two of these always go together. Start thinking about it. who, what, why, where, when, how in your conversation. Very, very powerful technique. Resolves a myriad of issues when introduced in organizations. We'll definitely be talking about that. You'll be challenged on that and to continue to utilize that. In fact, it'll be one of the most utilized techniques. This, I believe everyone in organizations understand how to do, utilize that. And I always say this, people write the way they talk and they drive the way they walk. What I mean by that is that when you learn how to talk like this, you also start having your written communication and emails and other opportunities, other mediums, utilize the same techniques. Very, very powerful technique when you learn it. Next, we get into the 15 C's. We have the 12 C's of communication with three bonus C's. We're going to just normalize that into the 15 C's of communication. So I'll show you two graphics here. We won't dive into this, but all 12 of these are, are inappropriate utilized. So when I say all 12, if you're looking at it from the video, you can see 12. Otherwise, take a listen right quick. Number one, confidence. Two, clarity. Three, completeness. Four, concreteness. Five, consistency. Six, courtesy. Seven, conciseness. Eight, consideration. Nine, content. Ten, correctness. Eleven, controlled. And then, number 12, competence. All 12 of these can be in action in one conversation. That's the thing about it. All 12 of these. Then we have the bonus three, which are credibility. Should be credible as you're talking, a catalyst, and commitment. All 15 of these. Very, very powerful as well. All 15 of these can be in operation when you are conversing with someone else. Making sure you have that as an appropriate utilization and at the top of mind, the forefront of your mind, utilizing this intentionally, strategically, purposefully, every single time, you decide to extract or I should say or to utilize verbal communication. Okay, anytime you're extending information to the person. So then we have leadership power dynamics. We're going to go into this really, really quickly. Leadership power dynamics. A power dynamic series that includes five different portions. One, verbal communication. And then the other four are all nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication being the primary opportunity for your communication method anyway. So we have power talking. That's the first one. That's verbal communication, power talking. We'll be talking about that. Power talking in terms of you disseminating contact, power talking and power responses. We have seven of those power responses when you, you can respond to someone appropriately. Power talking. So we have power dressing, again, nonverbal, understanding how you utilize your appearance as a means of communication to connote authority, to connote certain aspects of your, your demeanor, but also your brand, those types of opportunity. Power walking, understand how to walk. I remember my, one of my bosses, I'll tell you that story later on, taught me how to walk. I was like, what do you mean, teach me? I'm, he said, I'm going to teach you how to walk. Like, what do you mean, teach you how to walk? I, I know how to walk. I've been walking all, I've been walking, I don't know, since birth. Well, not birth, but two years old. Let's say two years old, one or two years old. No, 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 no. I'm going to teach you how to walk. I'm like, wow, okay. And he showed me. I was like, oh my. I had no idea. So I'll tell you that story later on. Then power sitting. How to appropriately sit as a man and how to appropriately sit as a woman is still connote and to demonstrate confidence. 
high level confidence as a leader. You need to understand how to strategically walk and strategically understand how to sit. Then power posing. How do you stand? How are you standing and posing? That also can connote confidence. You need all five of these, especially when you walk into a room. These other four are going to present themselves first. Then when you start talking, power talking comes into play. But understand how to power dress, power walk, power sit, power pose, or power stand, number of communication, power talking, which is verbal communication. And we'll be demonstrating a lot of that. There's, I believe there are 50 points in the program that we'll be talking about in the terms of utilizing power talking techniques. And then finally, well, in the power series of power talking, series, we have the power responses, seven power responses, reframe, rephrase, revisit, restate, request, rebalance, reorganize. Those are the more difficult concepts to learn how to respond that way. And then you have the homework assignment that I will be sharing with you. As you say, the expectations workbook. This is the final aspect, the final slide, the presentation, the final point I'm going to make. Is that now, and usually we have a WhatsApp group that we can also post this information in. We'll initially start sending it via email as well, but then we say uh, we start posting everything into the group. We can be active in the group if you're a single person, one on one coaching, it'll be sent to you via email. But we have a workbook that talks about expectations and outcomes what it is and what it is that regarding communication, what we answered at the beginning, but also dives into some other aspects. Okay, that's this particular opportunity to go over high level communication concepts that you will be understanding, you will be utilizing in the program. Granison Shines, and I'll be chatting with you soon. Thanks. Bye.